The burial of Nefertiti. The tomb and the historical situation. The tomb of Tutankhamun is that now numbered KV-62 in the Valley of the Kings, located in the central area of that cemetery's principal wadi in close proximity to other deposits variously associated with the late Minas and post-Amana periods K. 13,401,320 BC. These finds comprise the Corridor Tomb KV-16 ultimately employed by Ramesses I, the unfinished Corridor Tomb, KV-55 originally employed for the reinterment of Taye, mother of Akhenaten, to which the burial of Akhenaten was added temp. Tutankhamun, the bulk of Taye's burial, including her body, seems to have been removed temp. Ramesses X, the shaft tomb KV-56, original queenly. Ownership uncertain, the extensive, kingly corridor tomb KV-57 ultimately employed by Horn. And the shaft tomb KV-58 original ownership uncertain. A storage pit and a further single-chambered shaft associated with these or other burials of the period are, respectively, KV-54 containing materials seemingly displaced in antiquity from KV-62, and the recently discovered and as yet only partially published funerary storeroom KV-63 temp. Tutankhamun. The entrance to KV-6215 consists of a staircase leading down to a sloping corridor B, which, when first entered in 1922, preserved intact at either end its original, partially re-minus closed, re-minus plastered and re-minus sealed blockings cartonos. 4 and 13. Oriented towards the west, corridor B drops down to access first, a transverse chamber the antechamber, I, and, beyond that, a single, sunken storeroom the annex, here this latter entered via a small, rectangular doorway cut in the rock at the south end of the antechamber's west wall, again originally closed off, plastered, and stamped over with large seals. To the north of the antechamber, and similarly dug to a lower level, Lies Tutankhamun's burial chamber J at the time of the tomb's discovery a space separated from the antechamber by a plastered tristone partition pierced by an internal doorway to permit continuing access. Following the king's burial this internal doorway had itself been blocked with rough stones, plastered, and again stamped over its entire surface with large seals Carter no. 28. At the far end of the burial chamber, on its east, stands a further doorway, never closed, which gives admittance to a second storage chamber the treasury, jar. As has long been recognized, KV-62's restricted size is less than appropriate for a king's burial of the 18th dynasty. The common consensus is that the sepulchre had been selectively enlarged and adapted for Chu Tankaman's use from a much smaller tomb originally intended for a private individual. Only one of KV-62's current suite of four rooms had ever been plastered and painted and that was the burial chamber J, or House of Gold PRNBW the ancient terminology clearly referencing this decoration's conspicuous yellow ground. The paintings within this room document the principal stages in Tutankhamun's physical and spiritual transition from this world to the realm of the gods. Although affected by serious mold growth, these painted surfaces remain both sound and intact, covering as they do virtually every inch of the walls, the underlying architecture is almost wholly obscured. Carter, followed by all Egyptologists since, seems to have accepted that beneath lay only bedrock, influenced in this understanding by the fact that, for eccentrically placed amulet emplacements, Carter knows. 257 minus, 260, cut through the decoration to expose solid limestone in contrast to the modest scale and simplicity of the tomb proper, the range, quality, and richness of the furnishings crammed into Tutankhamun's four small chambers were overwhelming. While the majority of Egyptologists have tended to take this material at face value, those looking more critically have observed the presence of a range of objects taken over from predecessor kings and adapted for Tutankhamun's use. It transpires that the extent of this recycling is far greater than previously recognized, with direct or indirect evidence of re-use now detected in an astonishing 80% or more of the tombs, core burial equipment to include the large gilded shrines, sarcophagus, coffins, gold mask, and canopic equipment. Originally produced several years before Tutankhamun's accession, during the reign of Akhenaten, this material falls into two distinct groups. 
1. A stray scattering of pieces seemingly once intended for the burial of Akhenaten himself, and 2. By far the larger proportion, items initially prepared for the use of Akhenaten's junior, co-regent that mysterious and much-discussed individual distinguished by the cartouch names Ankhpura plus epithet, Nephaniferaten plus epithet. These objects provide a remarkable insight into the crisis generated by Tutankhamun's early and unexpected death. With funerary preparations for the boy king not yet set in train, the ancient undertakers were clearly obliged to improvise, whatever lay conveniently to hand in the valley of the kings and unused in palace. Stores were seized upon, adapted, and pressed into service with the final result, in terms of both tomb and treasure, falling considerably short of the pharaonic norm. Close study of this repurposed equipment sheds light too on the identity of its obscure co-regent owner. Body shape, iconography, and inscriptions combine to identify Ankhpura plus epithet, Nephaniferaten plus epithet, as a woman, and most likely the great royal wife Nephaniferaten Nefertiti in newly elevated guise. This same lady's rise evidently continued, culminating in her appointment as sole pharaoh, following Akhenaten's death and the adoption of a new and developed form of her semi, regal name Ankhpura Smenker Jizak Peru. It was presumably at this point, as full king, that Nefertiti's now outmoded co, Regent S. Tomb Furnishings, were set aside we may assume in favor of something very much better, and a fully pharaonic design. To date, however, not a scrap of this actual burial, rather than materials from one or other of Nefertiti's earlier, planned interments, has ever been brought to light. That her ultimate resting place was at Thebes, under the name of Smenker, I believe is now virtually certain, with a strong presumption that the burial remains hidden now.